was talking about. Uh, how do I say this without causing a, bit, a slight bit of controversy? I think a great number of Adventist critics would do themselves well to at least understand what she wrote. Because, of course, if you're criticizing her based off of uh, secondary or tertiary information, how are you any better than these rabid anti-Protestants or these rabid anti-Calvinists who don't understand? We're not defending Calvin. I mean, whenever someone tells me, I'm going to refute tulip theology because I, and therefore I've refuted your Calvinism, it just makes me laugh. Okay, well, maybe you actually managed to refute a tiny portion of Reformed theology, but you didn't deal with the rest of it. So again, I, I can't, how do I say it? I don't know if I can say I could refute Adventism either in that same uh, stroke of the pen on the whole, but I certainly do think I could refute certain things that Ellen White did and or said. I don't want to see. Yeah, I think that's, I think that that's a respectable no. position to take. I think, and I have the same critiques of people that irritate me because I think they're not being realistic with uh, history. And yeah, anytime anybody has criticisms and then they don't know basic things about it, I think they, they probably ought to keep their mouth shut and be a little more well, careful. I, that's all. I don't, I don't want to spark controversy, but briefly, I am curious. What, why is it that you and Graham have issues? I can kind of understand why, but I don't know the details. Huh. Oh, he uh, apparently thinks you can't keep the commandments. I do. Because that's what God's, I just, I, I don't know. Because you'll, you know, he'll, you'll hear him talk to certain people and same kind of things I would say. But then he trashes me like brutally. So I don't really. I don't really pay attention well, anymore. In fairness, I had a similar problem with him because I've noticed he'll, he'll do that. If he's around people who say are reformed or uh, uh, not familiar with what's the term, affectionate towards reformed theology, he'll generally agree with them. Get him with people who disagree, and suddenly he will start ripping into the subject really hard. So I'm not disparaging the guy. I just honestly, at that point, went, well, I mean, I don't see how this is a worthwhile expenditure of my limited time and kind of left it be. But I, I can I can fill in the blanks from there. I've had my own back and forth and email earlier this year with Graham. Uh, one time I remember I went on his panel just to say, hi, how are you, Graham? Why do you deny the gospel? Could we define <laughs> what we mean? By and here's what happened. Could you define what we mean by that? Kick. Um, debate me, bro. Um, debate me. Oh, not and then Charlie. Don't debate me, please. Hi, Never bro. debate me. <laughs> oh, I'm not good. Charlie. Char Charles, I have to admit, if we're going to get into the subject of antinomianism, what I don't get about Charles' position is, and since you're listening, Charlie, I would wonder if you'd answer it in the chat. Why is it that you never give a direct answer? about your position, because especially when you debated CJ last, you were asked if you're not an antinomian, then who? And you just couldn't answer the question. Well, he gave an answer. He said, he said those who, who would say you should, uh, it doesn't matter if you sin is what he said. He said, uh, well, well <laughs> hang on though. Let me tell you what though. Now this was not Charles, but I recently had a conversation with another free gracer by the name of Dan Beverly. And let me tell you what, man, these guys just, I mean, it is the gift to keep on giving. And I say that with a heavy amount of facetiousness. But, um, you know, we were talking about James chapter two and the concept of lordship. Uh, and he's, he, I kid you not, was making the point that he believed James chapter two, verse 19, the devils believe and tremble was actually a good statement. He was saying, you should be more like the devils. And I, I was oh, flat wow. when I heard that. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, I you, you should be more like, like the devil. I, I, you, you know, th this is where with guys like that, I stop quoting the Bible and I quote back to them the Wiccan Law of the Reed. Because at that <laughs> point, I, I strongly suggest you should join your nearest uh, witch coven. They would love you. 
And what ye oh, will yeah. do if ye harm none, do what ye will. Yeah, that's yeah. rather disturbing, actually. Yeah, um, there's one more spot if someone wants to join in. You What's guys, up, you bro? Awarded, just, just throw um, it, in, throw it out there. Just con jump in. Controversial subjects, if that's the case, about um discussion on um conditional immortality. Okay, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I just had to bring oh, it up. Oh no, I, I don't know if I. I am. <laughs> Shut up, humble servant. Shut up. <laughs> I'm just bugging, man. Yeah, you're, you're good. Hey, hey, Charles. Good to see you, man. Oh, what, I, I my... what in the world? He, that happened. It's something to I do know. with Charles. He's, he's... I know we have three. Try again, Charles. You're coming in like a chipmunk. Yeah, Charles, I, you sound crying. like a, a chipmunk. Maybe check He'll be your back. connection. What's up, bro? Hey. Um, yeah, not, uh, not much. I'm just, uh, put, I'm just uh, trying to learn my new game. Your new game? Yeah, back. I, I think I think Charles uh, Charles' microphone needs a good Protestant reformation. How about? <laughs> there you go. Come on, Charles. Do it this time. You got it this time, bro. All right. Oh, Charles, yeah. yeah. Actually, you know what? That just brings up a um, topic. There's something I've been wondering for a little while now. Um, there, there are people, obviously, who um, brought up with the up, the upraising that, like, all, um, you know, TV shows are evil, anything you can't watch, you can't play video games, you can't do this, and then there's other people that see it in another light. And I'm kind of wondering what the different perspectives are on that, like, within Christianity, what people think. About like when it comes to media and external things like well, that. Like it's that. funny because we were in indirectly, we were actually talking about that when Jamie was talking about liberty in Christ. Do I see anything in the Bible that says I can't watch anime? I'll use that example. Technically, no. Would I then be in the complete clear to watch what, excuse me, whatever anime I want, understanding that there's a grave amount of that? which is arguably pornographic, which is filled to the brim with idolatry, filled to the brim with just gore aplomb, depending on the anime, or other things like that. Well, I don't know if I should be watching that. I don't think that's what we mean when we say liberty in Christ. Um, now, that said, when you're talking about media, well, I just take a perspective of this. If I'm consuming media, 99% of that media is written by unbelieving people for unbelieving people. And I happen to be the 1% that doesn't fall into that category. Ergo, I have to recognize that if an unbelieving person says something about uh, the gospel or about Christ or that is patently wrong or that is completely unbiblical, I expect him to do that. He's unconverted. Now, I do struggle somewhat with it because there are just some very filthy things with it, and I really don't want to fill myself up with a bunch of filthiness. Because it's not like, uh, I'll put it this way, it's not like going to church once a week and reading your Bible every day is going to just clean out all that filth, so to speak. Yeah, right on, Ryan. Oh, that's good. I like that. I grew up um, in a liberal guess... Adventist church so I, in Seattle, so... So, um, oh yeah, no, that's kids. that's kind other of kids. interesting. Well, other then, kids. Eddie, can I jump in real yeah. quick? Anything that you put, uh, you know, above God is uh, basically the number one thing should be just love for God every day. So, if you play video games, you don't love God. Ooh, there's a statement. Uh, um, that, that's on. logically fallacious to say if you do X, then you don't love God. Okay, so I guess well, David didn't you, love you God, place, God. You so place entertainment over God, so you're entertaining but yourself. Did, did not, but did not yeah. King David did not King David place his own desires in the matter of Uriah above God temporarily, only to have to repent of it later? Well, also, I'll just I'll just go even farther than that. Um, did not King David have dancing and music and feasting and stuff like that? Hey, now, so I grew up in a house. Are, are you are you a king? He's, he was a king. Are you a king? Yeah, that's a really stupid statement, to be honest with you, because uh, it literally yeah, has that, nothing that, to do that, with that. Yeah, I, would agree. I, would like, I would like to hear what CJ has to say, if anybody doesn't mind. Go ahead, CJ. He so I, I actually grew up in a household that was very, very, very strict on that kind of stuff. Um, 
I used to get chastised in my teenage years uh, because I believed uh, that watching things like hockey was okay. Uh, and, and people t tell me about how that was like sinful and stuff like that. And I would tell my pastor at that time, the same thing I would say to everybody now, show me a verse which says I can't do it. Right now, you know, people will say, okay, well, there's verses about idolatry. Right. So I don't idolize the quarterback of my local football team. There's verses that talk about sex. Right. So I don't watch sexual movies like American Pie. But, but show me a quote that's not something general that says, hey, don't entertain yourself. Sports are bad. Music is bad. Uh, watching a play is bad. Right. You just can't find it. It's not there. And if you start adding works to the uh, for, first off, if you start adding works to the gospel that aren't there. I think you have a big problem. Uh, but even besides that, if you start adding to the law of God, well, regardless of if you think the statement don't add or take away is limited to Deuteronomy and Revelation or if it goes to the entire book, Deuteronomy is where a good portion of the law happens to be. So you're literally doing exactly what God said you should not do if you don't want to be cursed. Right. Um, I, I frankly think it's utterly absurd that people will say. And here's the other thing that makes it absurd, too. The great artists of um, history thanks, are um, are all Christians. Well, no, most of them. Most of them are Christians. I'll, I'll rephrase that, right? Um, or, you know, if, if you don't have a expanded view of Christianity, which I don't, to be fair. So, like, I would, I would consider Protestants and Catholics to be practicing different faiths. But at bare minimum... They are biblical theists, meaning Catholics or Protestants or Jews, right? And, I mean, the list is, is tremendous. Leonardo da Vinci was a Christian. Michelangelo was a Christian. Mozart was a Christian. Uh, you know, Shakespeare is commonly believed to be a Christian, though we're not 100% sure. Uh, Tolkien, of course, was Catholic. Lewis was a Protestant. You can just kind of go on and on and on. Even George Lucas claims to be a Methodist. And yeah. my only point in saying that is like, so you got all these people who are, you know, in their own personal lives, uh, um, you know, claiming Christianity or at least some form of biblical theism. And then you got other yeah. people who kind of just come around and say, well, no, I don't I don't really approve of that. I can't find a verse that says anything about it, but I don't really approve nonetheless. Therefore, they must be satanic or pagan or something like that. I, I, it's yeah, it's kind of comical. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. I think I can probably just uh, even uh, nuance that further a bit. The thing of it is, is that it, how you know a media is good or or evil to consume really kind of falls down to this. Does it by its nature violate God's law, the law of faith, the law of grace? Because if it if it doesn't violate God's law and the provisions and the clear um, boundaries he has made for his people, then it is not inherently by itself something evil to consume, uh, which which means I can I can uh, consume something like BattleTech uh, without any real moral quandary. However, something more along the lines of Friday the Thirteenth is something far more egregious, something far more clearly within bounds of uh, how would it, that clearly falls within uh, the trespass of of his law which means that would be evil to consume in, the, in such a circumstance, or at the very least, unpious, you know? And so it comes down to this. Um, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't edify, but it also doesn't, but it, if it doesn't edify, but also doesn't violate uh, Christianity and the law of, and law of faith, then it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing that will profane you. And which means, which means it comes down, it really, what, really come, what it really comes down to, at the end of the day, the idea that, well, you can enjoy games or something like that. It's rather just a very absurd form of legalism. Thank you, Alon, man. Um, actually, yeah, you're going the way, actually, yeah, of specifying what I mean right there. So that's what I'm getting at. Like, I, I guess I got into this mindset of just um, almost like, I don't know if you call it bigotry or, but just taking one idea and running with it and not being open-minded to seeing it another way. Um, so 
yeah, I, if I'm going to specify what exactly I mean, like I'll hear on one side of Christian, like I'll, there's this on the side that's just like, if you want to call it, I don't even know if I would like to, to, to phrase it this way. I'm going to, cause I don't know how else to phrase it. Ultra conservative that, you know, oh my goodness, like it's a war game that automatically means violence. That means guns. That means this, that means that. But then like a lone man was just saying, so, um, there'd be some people that would look at it like, okay, it had a gun in it. Well, that must automatically mean it's evil or something like that. But then there might be another, I'm, I'm open-minded to seeing it from another perspective. Does that mean it's innately evil or some, something like that? So. Well, and if I can add to that a little bit too, even that has to be somewhat nuanced. We also have like, for example, judges, the idea of worship is not simply singing Psalms or hymns. It is, the entire it is pervasive throughout the entire Christian life. If we are let's speaking let, about let, something, let's let, let's uh, let uh, uh, Charles uh, and uh, the others. Uh, I always knew you were a nerd. It's all about <laughs> living in the spirit. You guys, you misunderstand. It's but not about the content. If we are speaking about something that's not robs about the, the opportunity of worship or robs due worship from God, we are now speaking about something that obviously is not something in which the Christian can partake. What could that be? Well, again, the Bible tells you plenty enough about it to give you an idea. It could be uh, something you entertain in your thoughts all the way to something you have in your house. I can't give you a list, and nor do I wish to turn into a Talmudic Jew stupidly trying to create a hedge law in order to protect the New Testament. That would be insanely stupid. Well, and the other thing, too, like I was going to say. After, after you, CJ. Go ahead. Well, I'll be very quick. The other thing I was kind of going to say there, too, is even even looking at the content does have to be done with a level of nuance, right? Because, for example, if you read Judges, I mean, you want to talk about violence and grotesque violence. They literally, there's a woman who's gang raped to death and then chopped into 12 pieces so that her pieces can be sent to all the individual 12 tribes. I mean, it's like, it's horrid, right? But there is a very clear and present point to it that is incredibly edifying if you just, if you actually get the point. And likewise, you know, for I use a, a modern secular example, Saving Private Ryan, very, very violent, very gory, um, gives you as, as firsthand of an experience as you could get without actually going to war, of war, right? And, and so you can see the necessity and like the violence there. Um, Whereas you'll see something like the Saw movies, it's just violence for violence sake. It's just, it's the only reason it exists. Um, and, and that in and of itself is another area of nuance I think that needs to be explored. You, you guys don't understand there's a spiritual war going on. You're wasting your time entertaining your heart and your mind with nonsense. You got to read the Bible day and night and live in the spirit instead of living with your uh, uh, bodily desires and and selfish thoughts. That's what Yuri. it's all. Wait, is, and is, you got to humble is yourself. Yuri? Is this Yuri? I think it is Yuri. Okay, yeah. wait, wait, wait a second. How do we know? Himself. Wait, wait, wait. Which vibrations do we need to get there, though? <laughs> the good Bruce, one. You know, you know, you know the vibration you need. Read the Bible, man. No, I, no, that's good well, advice. Wait, hey, 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 wait, wait a minute, Yuri. Yeah. I, is, I seem to remember being on a panel with you uh, a while back with Dave, the news unit, where he was asking you if you had read the Bible that he sent to you, and I don't think you said yes. So why is it you wouldn't read a Bible that Dave sent to you, but you're telling us now to read the Bible? And, and why do you judge me? Why do you want us to humble ourselves and you don't show humility? No, I'm not judging you. I'm saying you're doing something that's hypocritical and inconsistent. If you yourself uh, will not partake that's who of this you are. You're a hypocrite, man. If, if you, you're, sir, you're, not, you're a hypocrite, me, man. That's who you if are. You, if you will not partake of the scriptures, why are you directing us to do that? Because that's what we're the subject is. Listen, the subject was was entertainment and uh, video games. And you, you, you turned it personal on me. So you know why you turned it personal on me? Because you cannot 
judge anybody, but you have to make it personal. No, I'm, I'm explaining asking, to you. I'm when you're playing you video question. games, you're not in the spirit. You're not no, living no, by the sir. spirit. Period. Well, then you you must not be living through the spirit. You're participating in a Streamyards live stream on Jamie's channel. Oh no. Yeah, I mean, and I'm asking you, know you about a public statement that you made over at the News <laughs> Units channel, where he asked you directly. Did you read the Bible that I sent you, Yuri? And you finally said to him, no, I did not. Sure, I read the Bible many times. I've been reading the Bible since I was six. Uh, why don't you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 26 and 27? Okay, let me grab my Bible then. Here it is. Ryan, just so you know, understand every question you ask him is going to be essentially word salad and essentially will translate to la, 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 I can't hear you. Oh, no, okay. I'm, familiar. I'm familiar. I'm just going to humor Yuri to see wherever this goes, probably down the rabbit hole of insanity, but we'll see. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 27, uh, 26 to 27. Truly I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid the last cent. You have heard that it has been was said, you shall not commit adultery. And pray tell, what do these texts have to do with our discussion? Well, I'm guessing battle. Uh, well, it's, so sorry, it's not. It's not chapter. Right? It's not chapter. It's chapter six or chapter seven. It should be where Jesus says, "You should abandon everything you love." Yeah, and if you don't abandon everything you love, you cannot be one of my disciples. Well, you're actually, sir, the one making the judgment is you because I don't love these things above Christ. And I believe what you're referencing is probably Matthew 10 to Matthew 11, where Christ is saying to take up your cross and deny yourself and not to love father and mother, son or daughter, et cetera, et cetera, more than Christ because you're unworthy of him if you're doing that. Uh, even if I were to engage in some of my secular hobbies with knife sharpening, I enjoy it. I do love doing it. I do not love that more than the Messiah. I'm done knife sharpening now. I quit making noise. Well, obviously, if you spend your time but, entertainment, all that stuff, then uh, obviously you don't love God, man. How do you spend uh, your time? Oh, good Lord. Now we're in trouble. You spend your time fighting with us on StreamYard. Do you hey, really bro, think? Got, do you no, really think you're doing God's bidding? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not fighting with you. I'm not fighting with you at all. I'm just uh, put, uh, giving you my thought about it. If you're wasting your time and your life and your uh, energy on uh, playing video games and watching movies, you're not living in the spirit. Yuri, Yuri, come on, hold on. I got it. I got a new knife. Well, for first of all, I just want to point out, out Yuri did not explicitly wrong. mention tabletop RPG, so I guess I'm in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a verse that says that. <laughs> just give me, just give me one. Wait, yeah, I would like to see this uh, verse, verse that you're citing to support your argument, Yuri. Do you happen to have one, or are you sober enough? Yeah, there, to there's one? a there's a spiritual war going on right now every day, and uh, you guys. Yeah, no, we, we didn't ask it. you for an assertion. We asked you, where yeah. does the Bible support what you're saying? Support what? That you, you should live in the spirit in many verses, man. No, sir. I asked you specifically, you are saying if we watch movies and TV and argue on the internet that we are walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. So therefore, sir... Which verse or verses directly say that or indirectly amount to that? Please show us. Uh, I got one. I'll go for one. How about the one where Jesus says, he who gains his life will lose it, and he who loses his life will gain it. Okay, guess he can't do it. I want to know I mean, what how, is that? how did he get on StreamYard if he never got on YouTube? And what was he on YouTube for? You know, that's a good question. What were you, what were you watching? Were you in fellowship with God when you were watching it? I don't, I don't think we're going to get an answer. I, I really don't. Maybe he humbled himself. <laughs> it doesn't really did. doesn't really matter what I tell you because you you want acceptance. So why why should I waste my energy on you? Right, well, you know, right. No, don't waste well, no, 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 Charles, Charles, Charles. Let him say that because if he thinks we're fools, he'll stop bugging us. 
okay. You see my point? If well, we're whatever, for, whatever it takes for him to be quiet. I'm with you. Yeah, I mean that, that's what I'm saying. Yuri, yeah, you know what? I, I will fully concede to you. If you think we're fools, then there is no further point for you to cast pearls before this line. Look, I just want one verse that says entertainment is bad. That's all I'm asking. I will concede to the scriptures that you have 66 books, 40 authors, some 3,000 pages. Um, just give me one. And I will concede if you have one that says, thou shalt not entertain thine self. And I'm not, I'm not joking. Well, See, respectfully, about- CJ, you're asking a lot out of you, for that. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I am so utterly and deeply humbled. I don't know about I don't know how humbled you guys are, but I'm very humbled. You know what? I think I'm so humbled that I've transcended into another plane of reality. So <laughs> please excuse me. Uh, I have to go do something better than talk to you, peons. You know, I'm well, well, so listen, humbled. Ryan, I may just need a man you don't need to be humbled. Do that. You just need to like uh, eat a mushroom, and that, that's all you need. <laughs> Well, I, a certain yeah. a certain Korean once told me all I need to do is see the change. I I once asked a certain Asian man of the same of the same sort, uh, "What is righteousness?" He couldn't give me an answer. The funniest thing I ever saw, the funniest thing I ever saw, speaking about him, was uh, it was what it was uh, Jesus is Lord asked him outright. What is the gospel? And he couldn't answer. Matthew 8, verse 22, which had nothing to do with the question at hand. All right. Okay. So I'm going to ask everybody uh, concede to my uh, butting in whenever just to keep it, try to keep it focused here. Uh, Charles, um, I need to, sorry, one second. Okay, Charles, you have one minute. One minute, what you think I'm a gimmick? You can't give me a limit because when I spit, it's limitless. I'm in touch with the infinite. You, oh, you mean too? No way, bro. Sometimes I love you, dude. Uh, that was me, uh, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sorry, I thought that was fro, but yeah. So that is one argument. Um, I believe that Jesus was born on the first night of Hanukkah, circumcised on the last night of Hanukkah. And we, all right, we lost you again. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you out. Come back in. He always has technical issues, so yeah. Come not- back in, CJ. I'm just gonna kick you because you keep cutting out. But uh, one thing I find interesting is, uh, and by the way, I I I've supported CJ because of his character for just like I donate to his channel, and so you should check it out. But um. That being said, I swear, I if I recall, CJ, hopefully you can hear this, CJ, uh, that um, when I brought up a similar type of argument, you didn't accept it, but now you're using that sort of argument. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm accusing you of, um, of uh, what's what would that be called? Uh, I don't even know what that would be called. You're, the temple dedication thing. I agree is a thing. So when he gets back, he can continue his argument, but. Uh, I do think what now? So John Walton's book is uh, he makes he's not a young earth creationist, so he takes the temple dedication text, which I actually find actually quite interesting because I was considering this, and there is something to it, right? There's a theme in Genesis that, you know, in many levels, and you could say God's temple in heaven, right? You Adventist theology uh, is largely based on a lot of the language about this, and so it fits nicely that God's building a family for. his intention of a you know, family in his temple and all this sort of thing. And he kind of like, he leaves the earth, you could say, if you want to take the story that way. And, you know, is separated from, from humans. And then it's all bringing everybody back to the mountain of God, so to speak. And so I actually accept that sort of theme that's there. And, and John all studied. Come back, CJ. And so I, I actually think there's something to this idea. But the, it's what's interesting is part of the problem that Miller Millerites had and their interpretation of, of the 2300 days and because the, then shall the temple be cleansed they thought the temple meant the earth um and so it was a representation of the second coming and so the question so that to me this idea 
of looking at the Bible that way, like a temple dedication of like the whole cosmos, or just uh, you could look at it as the earth or whatever. It just kind of reminds me of the mistake though, of make of assuming that the imagery of like, you know, God and the temple would be the earth, you know, that kind of reminds me of that sort of thing that it's a temple dedication. And it's like the creations in view that, that Walton suggests, which I don't know if you get what I'm saying, but it, it just reminds me of, of, uh, interpreting stuff in that sort of way, which of course, obviously what I believe the 2300 days did end somewhere around 1844 anyway, but, but it's not the earth that was to be cleansed. It was. Hey, Jamie, you know, Jamie can, CJ you, can you pin, can there? you pin the link if you don't mind in the chat, because CJ yeah, is in the chat yeah. asking for the link. Yes. So here, like we'll give him the floor when he gets back in here. I did mention that cause something I was thinking about. Like, uh, you know, if you make the typology too, broad in that like maybe the temple is represented by the creation so to speak and then something to that effect it just kind of reminded me of the that sort of spiritualizing the text although i don't think a literal temple is what god's intending to do although jesus will probably rule from a temple forever on the earth um in a recreated earth but yeah there's i think i posted and yeah okay there he is all right cj the floor is yours I criticized you, by the way, just for your benefit. For your benefit, my friend. <laughs> oh, I, I was in the in the uh, live chat, so I was able to hear. I just for whatever. Actually, oh my get God. The there link. we are. Okay. Four names in the cycles. The December January area is what everybody thinks that Jesus's birthday, or at least what historically everybody thought Jesus's birthday. Uh, the that's precisely the time that you would need. Yom Kippur is about September, October area. You just kind of do the math. Let's go with September for a moment, just so we don't have to look, you know, both of, uh, to, to do too much guesswork. September, add your nine months for John. He would be born in June, which is traditionally when he's said to be born. Add six months the Icelandic Viking king. The other ones that people bring up, like Saturnalia. Saturnalia was never on December 25th, and it's just really poor historical uh, research that suggests that it was the solstice on December 25th, and it's just really poor historical. Is that Kenny? Kenny, is that you? Hey, man. No, I'm I'm James from Kamloops, BC. Okay, good good to have you, man. What's up? You want to have a comment? I'm just I'm just thinking? sort of listening in. That you're talking about the covenants and stuff, and and so yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. You, I'm just curious if you're, you know, obviously I'm just sort of maybe listening because I don't want to seem like I'm coming to try to teach anyone anything, but no, it you're just fine. seems to me. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Um, I just, just want to say, it thanks, just, CJ, it, thanks for sharing that, CJ. Uh, yeah, go yeah. ahead. I know I'll just listen for a bit. Like I say, I'm just kind of getting, am I under the impression that you believe that we're under the law then? Um. So if you mean under the law, like, like uh, the old covenant, like for example, like do I think Ishmael, we're under the old covenant? Isaac, no. Galatians, 4, no, I, I recognize. So I would say this I would say, uh, and I and I'm if you can disagree with me, and I'm glad you're uh sharing I'm your opinion, so I'm welcome to have you. I'm glad to have you. Um, so yeah, I would say something like this if you mean, are we under the law? No, we're not under the law. What does that mean? Is the question. So I would say, no, I believe Paul, and then I would say, seems to me the New Testament would say. Mm -hmm. We're under the new covenant promised to Abraham, something like that. And then um, that he ratified the covenant by his blood, Paul says. And then I would say Jeremiah 31, 31 being quoted in Hebrews twice would be an indication of that. Jesus, you know, quotes that Jesus is making. So I would say, are we under the law? Not like Paul. I think Paul means it. But are we, is, does the law stand? Yeah, just as only as firm as God's character does. Something like that. So yeah, go ahead and uh, make any kind of argument you want to make. That would be great. No, I'm I'm not really like I say into are you. I'm just trying to get an understanding. <laughs> are you a Seventh Day Adventist? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, I, this is the the I'm the channel. I run the channel, and yes, I am. Yeah, I know that part. Yeah, yeah. That's why I came on. Yeah, I was I was an Adventist, but I sort of studied my way out. So. Here I am. Just congratulations. Listening. To I, right I, I've been listening to other Christians for 10 years and I ran with my hair on fire back to it. I would say back Something to like Adventism. That. Yeah. Back, back home, baby. Yeah. 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 Cool. I, I personally don't understand how you can do that, but I can't, I can't, you know, I'm not the Holy spirit. So. 
Well, yeah, go ahead. I mean, if you, I'd love to hear some sort of argument about, um, you know, where you disagree or what you would have an issue with. And you can and, direct you know, that again, I, think sort of, I really think that would be a rude thing for me to do. I'm more here to listen and to just see where everyone's coming from, but not to argue. All right, I'll do the arguing. Um, yeah, so I, since I'm the only dispensationalist in the room, I have a particular view of the covenants. Uh I believe that the covenants are, and of course, you can find this within Reformed theology and things like that. The difference is, is the theological covenants are manifested in the biblical covenants. So they would see the covenant of redemption. So, and that, that would make all the biblical covenants in the Bible as sociological categories, whereas I view them as sociological categories. So, based on land grant, is a human being? So I'm well, if, you if, it, if one without the other, but you one. 522 but then but then jesus says if you love me you'll follow my commandments i'm to be honest that's always just stuck with me it's a hard i can't just well that. but what what do you like just uh i think it's what's the continuity and what's in other words you're underneath the tutor until a period of time so it's not talking about hey let me give you then you're still preserved that's yeah. what the clarification is about yeah so um and I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. I think the difference, though, is um, when it comes to some of like, and I'll use Josiah as an example. Josiah was killed. Um, he wasn't necessarily sinning per se, other than the fact that he was disobeying God in, in what he did militarily. But nevertheless, it got him killed, right? Um, and Saul is another good example. Saul, of course, also being killed, um, you know, in the in the battle with the Philistines. With both of the things that they were doing, while they were certainly sinful, they were not something that detaches you from uh, the Christian faith. And something that I think, at least in the case of uh, Saul, I think it appears that he's even somewhat repentant before he dies. It's just sort of like the verdict has already been sort of laid out. Um, but, you know, he can't be trusted, right? He keeps going back on his word and all this other kind of stuff. At any rate, the point there being, it would be different if... Like, for example, Solomon dies while he's actively a Molech worshiper, right? Because whereas Saul is dying in, in an instance where he's being disobedient, but nevertheless is still a believer, uh, you, when you have something like, um, you know, Solomon's death, he's not only a disbeliever at that point, or at least is acting as, as one, but he's also in flagrant and constant sin, the likes of which just don't seem to stop. So, like, if he were to die at that point, and then we had confirmation from the scripture that he actually is saved. Uh, you know, that would be, I think, a fundamentally different thing than when you have a situation of somebody who's like apostatized, if that makes sense. Well, I'm glad you believe that Solomon was worshiping Molech, at, at least at some point. Um, I, I thought you believed that, but there are some people that don't. So I'm glad you at least stated that. And CJ. So, uh, Oh, one, one second, humble. Um, so if I'm understanding you right, CJ. Yes, I'm cutting out for some reason in and out. Uh, in in mm -hmm. him for righteousness, which comes, I believe, in on the altar, and so on and so forth. Right, is achieving some righteous will do with the free will. So now take this back to the instance of Satan, right? However, it is not as if God is simply willing this to happen and forcing Lucifer to fall. Lucifer obviously chose to rebel. Therefore, God is not the author of secondary agents and causes per se. That was Lucifer and so not to say God. If you are going to say that it is actually God doing it, then I invite you to become a Muslim. Oh, he's now, I, I agree with that, but it is important to remember um, there are some Christians who take that kind of fatalistic view, not least of which is actually Martin Luther. It's funny. We call people who are hard determinist hyper Calvinists, but really they'd be Lutherans because it was Luther who said that we were um, dragged by chains of God into our sins. Which yeah. is something that Calvin himself would have never affirmed. Calvin was more no. uh, compatibilist. Like Augustine would not have said that. None of the early fathers really would have said that. This was Luther going to his conclusions in his own extremes. Yeah, exactly. And, and which is 
I love Luther, but he would do that very often, right? He's kind of a he's kind of a firecracker. Okay, check this out. Let's let's go over this slowly because uh, I would say this should help. At least, I mean, the question might be like, what did the author have in mind? Because whatever that is is what God wanted in there. And so, of course, there's interpretation that you can put on it, and you know, especially if you're dedicated, and I would be that God's knowledge or is uh, exhaustive. Um, it talks about saying, it seems to want to say, and to give an example of, of that. It I mean, can the devil distort thing God's grace or is that impossible? I never even thought about it really. Well, sure he can, but God has to let him, right? right? I mean, yeah, again, if yeah. you're going to rag on thick shades for calling himself God, for saying that he is the true light and that Satan and or God can change the Bible. Can't you see the logical consistency here of that? How could you then get mad at the devil or say that the devil could then distort or corrupt God's grace? Perhaps he can right. distort one's perception. I mean, come on, follow the argument through. I, I, I'm sorry, Ryan, would you like to mock me a little more? Why don't you explain your point exactly? Because I'm confused here that God created you. Right. Well, none of us are going to sit here and deny that the bone cancer is a creation of God. Of course it is. Well, no. The law says you're the one who did it. You're the one who decided to murder me, right? Now, you could get into the question of, okay, but did you provoke or anything like that? And that's obviously – obviously the answer to that question would be yes, but that's not the point of this analogy right now. The point of the analogy is just to say the blame lies on the guy who did it, not on the guy who provoked it. Now, if you are biblically astute, you might ask the question, yes, but doesn't Matthew 18, 7 say, woe unto him by whom the offense comes? Totally fair, right? Um, so now you have to ask a question, is God the one by whom the offense comes? And there, in the sense of a prime mover, I guess you could argue the answer is yes. But as the Westminster Confession, Chapter 3 says, which I don't believe is binding, but which nevertheless gets this right, um, the, the first cause is established not in, and I'm paraphrasing, the first cause is established, but not in contradiction with secondary agency, right? In other words, God has written the story, but it's not to such an extent that the secondary agents no longer exist or are no longer able to do what they will to do. Rather, it's actually how these things are established is what the Westminster Confession goes on to say. And, and again, I think that's exactly right. Um, now, we all know, uh, probably atheists, but sometimes maltheists, who will say, well, God created the world x y and z and therefore i won't serve him i mean how many times have you guys heard bone cancer therefore i hate god right well none oh, of us yeah. are going to sit here and deny <laughs> that bone cancer thing. is a creation of god of course it is it's like it, it doesn't even make any sense to suggest otherwise in fact most people's reinterpretation of isaiah 45 7 says no 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 not evil natural evil like calamity and so it's like oh so you mean like bone cancer right um, so in other words, none of us would argue with the notion that God is ultimately the prime mover and that bone cancer and black widows and ticks that spread malaria and Lyme's disease and all this other kind of, these are his creations, right? Um, so, but why is it that when we hear them use those arguments, we don't say, Hey, okay, the, that's, you know what? That's actually a good point. Why do I serve God knowing the bone cancer exists? Well, it's because we recognize that there is a fundamental flaw in that argumentation of basically saying, you know, because the author has decided the world works in the way that it does, I can decide not to serve him, even though he's given me every opportunity not to fall into these pitfalls, as well as to have redemption if I do fall into these pitfalls. You don't think that it's a distortion of what, well, I guess... I mean, can the devil distort thing God's grace, or is that impossible? I never even thought about it, really. Well, sure he can, but God has to let him, right? right? I mean, yeah, again, if yeah. you're going to rag on thick shades for calling himself God, for saying that he is the true light and that Satan and or God can change the Bible, can't you see the logical consistency here of that? How could you then 
get mad at the devil or say that the devil could then distort or corrupt God's grace. Perhaps he can right. distort one's perception. I mean, come on, follow the argument through. I, I, I'm sorry, Ryan, would you like to mock me a little more? Why don't you explain your point exactly? Because I'm confused here that God created evil. Sorry. Um, I'm applying your own argument you use with thick shades to you, which is that <laughs> if you think it's wrong for him to say that he is God, that Satan changed the Bible, all these insane things. No, that no bullshit. Don't play this okay, stop, stop. Bruce, you can, Bruce, you can respond, Bruce, and then we're going to move. That's not what I said. Bruce, you respond, and then I want to move on because I don't want to do I didn't this. Okay, that. whatever. Well, you know, again. The Bible's very different than cancer, bud, or, or somebody's freaking okay, head Okay, apparently, apparently you can't follow the argument. The point is that. No, I'm too stupid. What do you expect? I'm a retard. Go ahead. Keep going. No, I don't. Okay, moving this on. This is why moving I don't on. talk to you anymore. Okay, oh, so, so no, you Jimmy just don't James like being called out as a liar. That's your real problem. Okay, guys. I don't yeah, want to Bruce, I'm not don't getting mind. into this. You don't mind? Anymore. You don't mind, guys? Just let's just move on. God's sorry evil. That, you know, sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> okay, so Jimmy James, who's leaning Calvinistic, as a as a sounds like maybe a new believer. I'm not sure. Didn't catch it for sure, but he just said in the audience. From the audience that well the death blow to calvinism here we have it so i uh, let the calvinists respond i have i'm not going to comment i'm just curious how you guys respond but we are all ambassadors for christ whoa we're all ambassadors for christ we keep moving it around sorry okay. there, there, there. now then we are our ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god for he hath made him be sin for us we do no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I don't understand how this is a death blow to Calvinism. We affirm Christ's impeccability that he is sinless. We affirm the Great Commission. What's the problem? Well, and I think uh, this is actually kind of what I had talked about a little earlier where I was talking, because I think what he was asking was, um, you know, basically how, how can we all... Um, Yes, he said, I already read that text to CJ. So he's essentially getting to how can he be imploring us to turn away if he's already predestined, whether or not it's going to happen. Um, and I just kind of, my answer at least was the. Um, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I forgot. That's right. I remember that now. Go ahead. Give your answer. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll be very short, but it was just basically the ends as well as the means are uh, predestined. And one of those means is, I think, uh, genuine <laughs> free will. Lord, sure, sure, sure. It's compatibilism, bro. Yeah, exactly. Mom, man. My, my well, favorite. Yeah, really quickly, my, I would my, just like to point out, you know, sure. And I don't say this as, as an insult. I say it as a very genuine, uh, uh, what would you say that, uh, inquiry. Why is it that non Calvinist Christians will so readily accept? what they feel like is contradictory in the hypostatic union, which I don't believe is contradictory, by the way, hear me out. I'm not saying that it is, but nevertheless, most people don't get it. Right. And even those who do get it, admit that we have to, um, you know, appeal to a certain level of mystery because it's not something that's ever going to be replicated, but it sounds contradictory to say God is hundred uh, percent. Christ to be more specific is hundred percent God and hundred percent man. And nevertheless, we accept it because that's what scripture teaches. But when we Can say choices are both 100% determined and 100% free, we say, no, that doesn't make any sense because I can't make any sense of it. How does that work? I think, I think, um, I don't, I don't know how the hypostatic union works. I just know that Jesus experienced humanity as a human. And if that requires him to shed himself of the, which it seems to, in some sense, make him seems like I, I'm more inclined to say the person who is the eternal son uh, became a man and rather than say he somehow, uh, you know, I'd say he, he gave it up and uh, in some sense uh, before I'm going to say it, it, it would be better to say he put it aside. Right. Right. I mean, to me, that makes more sense. Not sure if that's a problem or not in one sense so like i'm 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 careful 
Uh, I know somebody was accusing my tradition of, and so maybe I've been ingrained without knowing it as a heretic, but I would say that he was claiming that my tradition says that uh, Jesus was just totally human. And if he means, I don't remember being taught that as far as I can remember, it was just like, no, Jesus is God. Jesus, and he was fully man. He became a man, but he is totally God. And, and he's the person who is God. But then like how you work that out in your mind, people make this big deal. Like he wasn't really human. He was God too. And it's like, I'd be more inclined to say he became a human and he is God because he is that person. And it's, but if that's a problem, I don't know why it would be. He, yes, he is God who put on flesh and dwelled among us. And we held it, beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, the one and only Son of the Father, uh, full of grace and truth. Uh, he emptied himself, Philippians 2 says, and tabernacle and dwarf dwelled among us. He did not think it was robbery or something to be grasped at to uh, equate himself with God. So we have no issue there. Well, let's say, okay, let, okay, I mean, okay here's the thought experiment. Say uh, the Marvel Universe is real, and I'm Thor. And whatever it means, let's say somebody invented a, some sort of scientific thing where whatever makes me who I am, but I'm that person, and then you put me in the womb of a, of a normal human, and I'm born as a human, and I don't have my powers anymore, but I am that person who had those powers. But like, and the only way I can have access to them is, is through, uh, you know... Um, some sort of intimate relationship to the father in heaven or, or, you know, Odin or whatever. And then anything I call on, he'll do because of our relationship and who I am. But I technically don't have that power. Like whatever, what does that even mean? I mean, I don't even, uh, to well, me, well, Jamie, you know, you, you should not say he did not have that power because Christ did not set aside his divinity as he incarnated. Right, right. Well, that's what I'm asking. I'm saying, like, what I'm not denying that he is the logos, but is it is um, does it even really matter how you conceive of that part? He is that person. Yes, it does. Well, it does because this is where you would actually enter into heresies like Deceticism, Nestorianism, or Apollinarianism. Yeah, right. But apparently, I'm just not sure why why that. What what the consequence is of, of looking at it that way? I'm not saying I believe it. Well, the way. the, con sure. the consequence is that if if he lost any aspect of his divinity in his incarnation, that he is not the Christ that we know and love. So that that is truly the problem there. There is a little heresy known as kenosis, and I think right. you're flirting with it unintentionally. Well, I'm I'm just asking questions. I'm not saying I'm I'm not decided or I don't feel day it either way i'm just saying i'm just exploring the idea like like wait so i've tended to think yes and i like get he that. suppressed it he suppressed that in order to fulfill uh being tempted as we are so to speak whatever that exactly means is not clear i do know in historically in christian circles and i, I think it is in scholarship and adventism i'm i saw a thing on this where they're talking about it but like people argue about like what it even what this even means but like did he have human flesh like or do you have pre-adam fall flesh human flesh what do you guys think did he have the kind of human flesh that adam had before he fell or did he was he born into a body that had well it, it's flesh? a que it's a question that is that truly is irrelevant because all we know is that he did no sin neither was any deceit in his mouth first peter 2 verse 22 Okay. We know that he never, uh, we know that he did not sin. So it doesn't matter what sort what type of flesh that he had, either the flesh uh, following the fall or the flesh prior to the fall. We simply know that he was immaculate. Okay. He was, uh, he yeah, was. Uh, one, 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 one retarded one, question one. before I go, though, before I go to bed. Go one dumb thing. So he didn't sin. He never did anything evil. Nothing bad. He's all good. So I am wondering, did Jesus create brain cancer, heart attacks? Yeah, all the, all the horrible things we can think of that could happen to a person and everything in the world. Did he create that? CJ, would you like to tackle that one? Or do you want oh, me? No, please don't, man. Let me just go to bed. Honest to goodness, I'm not going to believe you if you tell me. Um, but apparently, it's my time. I know that. 
I'm I wasting say, your time. In other that, words, I think the problem is you don't like to think about the things you just stated earlier, do you? Anyhow, good night. Good night. I would say I would want to make a distinction. I wouldn't say God like formulated it and like and makes it happen like you know in the sense not I mean, although i'm open to the idea that god uses those sorts of things like he may uh like you know it's weird like how did, does god set things in motion and then they happen the way he saw that they would and what's the difference between saying that and that and him actively you know zapping cancer into somebody like is a miracle or something or like would cancer not have existed if you well, had just let things happen if, if there had not happen? been sin there would be no illness right. i would simply say that i don't see cancer or any other illness disability or whatever the case is anything more than the natural byproduct or conclusion of the fall now that mm -hmm. said i also cannot see uh, how do you put it? Does that mean that God is the ultimate author of cancer? Well, it does not. Nothing happens without his knowledge and his decree. But we don't see God decreeing. I'm going to create incurable diseases and you're going to have them. We don't see him issuing those sorts of things until after the fall as a punishment, usually to his wayward people. Uh, one of the curses in Deuteronomy 28, as an example, is that if you disobey, I will strike you with incurable diseases. So does that mean God can't strike people or that God would indeed do that? Yes. But yeah, he does it in a very saying. specific context. Exactly. That's that's how I look at it. It's like, yes, he's sovereign. Yes, he can even he'll even use that for good purposes. That certainly is on the table. It has to be. But there also seems to be a, some sort of separation where God's like not like you know, it's just like, how far do you want to take it? It's like, you well, should yeah. be open to the idea yeah. that God's going to utilize it. Nothing fools God. He, he well, certainly allows it. it, it he certainly yeah, the, the, question, the question also being asked from the questioner, I take with a grain of salt, because there again, um, maybe he is a Wesleyan at current, and at other times he doesn't know if there is or isn't a God. So I don't know where Bruce is at with that at current. Hope one day God gives him repentance. Uh, if that is the case, that he's unsure about God, don't know at this point. That being said, however, we firmly said, as CJ referenced it from the Westminster Confession, Chapter 3, that we don't think by any means that God is the primary agent or the primary mover or the primary author of horrible things like brain cancer, blood clots, uh, or things that are evil, wicked, or nasty. Now, as a consequence, though, you do have to recognize God is still free to use whatever tool he wants, being that he is sovereign. Ergo, if he for some reason strikes me like my uncle has been unfortunately afflicted with paralyzed vocal cords tomorrow, then I have to rejoice that he has done so. And frankly, he is free to do it. I, however, am not. I can will to grow wings and fly to Denver. Well. I can will to fly to Denver. That can be physically done. I guarantee you I'm not growing wings. Yeah. And Dad, I think the other thing that's kind of important to remember here, too, is, you know, Isaiah 45, 7 means something. We can all agree to that, at least, right? It, mean, it at least means a thing, some kind of thing. Um, facetiousness aside, though, it says... You know, it obviously talks about light and darkness and, and all this kind of stuff. And then it says, and create ra'ah is the actual Hebrew word. I create evil is what he says. Now, obviously, as as I think Ryan was just explaining and as I've explained earlier, there is some, some nuance to be put on that. But the point is, ultimately, that we can't say that means nothing, right? We can't say... Oh, what he really means by that is he created unicorns and butterflies because that's not what it says. You know what I mean? Um, so there, or any, of course, in Amos, he repeats it. Has, is there evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? Um, now, scripture with scripture, of course, right? God is not saying that he is like malignant or that he is uh, maleficent or that he is evil or any of these sort of uh, sort of things. And, you know, even as, as you've often pointed out, Jamie, he 
references in the parable of the sower, you know, an enemy has done this. So there is, like I said, some nuance to be said. But what it can't mean is literally nothing at all, right? Yeah, yeah right. That God is is creating only all of the super good marshmallowy things and and none of the bad things. Yes, no, he he clearly creates ra'a calamity, ra'a exactly. evil. Now it depends on how this is used within the text. But even if you don't want to look at Isaiah forty-seven verses uh, forty-five verses six to seven, where you see ra'a. You do see God saying all throughout the prophets, minor or major, that he does do and decree calamity, disaster, and things that are, I don't want to say morally evil, but things that are definitely, um, how do I put it, not so savory. He decrees to send Israel into slavery because they rebelled against them. He causes the death of people who defy him and disobey him in various means. And in some ways, he does it himself. In other ways, uh, we have the example of the man who mocked King David. David permitted him graciously to live in his reign, but told Solomon, do not let his gray hair go down to the grave without punishing him. And what was the punishment given? Well, it was simple. You know, uh, in you know, not just being an NPC, but there's nothing wrong with admitting that, uh, in my opinion. That's just my thinking on it. And so, likewise, well, I think if, pretending if you're, could, you're not right because you didn't. You've had so many people lay hands on you, promising instant pain. I don't think Jamie is dishonest or stupid, as they say he is, for con believing what he does. In fact, frankly. I'm kind of relieved to hear him say, I, I've settled, I'm on one of these two sides. I am an Adventist. I'd rather talk to someone who knows than to someone who's unsure. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's, I appreciate that. So, I think, um, you know, this is why I've always tried to say, and it's like, yeah, but you haven't been to a church in 13 years. And you don't agree with the traditional concepts of marriage. You don't think Jesus is God and, and all this other kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And like that seems very dangerous to me. And, and it seems like both directions it tends to go are very dangerous. One direction being what I was just describing, that sort of progressive nominalism. I blame Peter baptism. I blame Peter baptism. Oh, I, I'm born a Catholic. I was born Catholic. It's a national. Yes, well, but like, I was the, born the, mode, that's, well, the that's sacrament of baptism. Think of the SBC, right? The Southern Baptist Convention doesn't believe in pedo baptism, and they're one of the more conservative fundamentalist groups out there. And the same thing. Well, they that, were. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, actually, that, that's an argument I can make in that if you're going to blame the sacrament of baptism and the mode in which we Presbyterians engage of uh, pouring or sprinkling, then I simply point you to the Southern Bastard, I mean Baptist Convention, and what's going on there, because clearly they are not pedo-baptists. Well, well, that's exactly my point, though, right? Is like SBC... I went on like this 25 minute rant. It, 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 would, it would have to depend on the text, Bruce, but that's not the point I was making to you. I mean, like, I can understand. Well, that, that, I mean, I don't even understand that position because that seems so very well, useless. If you really want to understand, read Isaiah chapter 9 and they'll tell you yes, what's going on. You're, 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 yeah. you're the same guy that when I asked you why you wouldn't read the Bible that the news unit got you, you didn't want to answer the question. So thank you the very much. The news unit got me the Bible in the English language. I've been reading the Bible in, in my language for the last uh, 30, it'll be 34 years, man. Synagogue had a good point when he said hope, that um, the leadership in all these denominations. Oh Lord, not is, dirty uh, well, I mean, I, mean, I want to. I want to. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, there was some mocking when I left. I just wanted to come back and see if we could address this. Are there? I was any, not mocking you, Bruce. I was I mean, I mean, I regardless, regardless. Are, you um, are there any errors in the Bible? No, I don't think there are, Bruce. There's the, the no point I was, in the Bible. The point I was making to you I, is a I'm, logical I'm, point, Bruce. I'm asking, are there We're any errors? Mocking. Are, are I there just any said errors? no, Bruce. Sure you're mocking every okay. time you open habla, your mouth. Habla, habla, habla usted inglés? I said no. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, hold on a second. Are you going to tell me that there aren't textual variants 
that one a textual is right, variant is not an error. Textual mm -hmm. variants are not an error. What are they? <laughs> oh, are they? you you literally just said what they are. They're textual they're not errors. Huh? Well, okay, so they're textual. Okay, errors. dirty. You you can put the bong away. I ain't even talking to you right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, let Bruce make his point now. Come on, go ahead, Bruce. So you don't believe that there's any errors when you look at these variants in Hebrew or Greek that one would be right and one would be wrong. It's well, it, it, would ha it would have to depend on the text, Bruce, but that's not the point I was making to you. Yeah, Ryan okay. likes to lie to himself, Bruce. So, so Charlie, we're trying to resolve something that doesn't concern you. you. Know, Thank what you. I'm trying to say is simply this. That if there's a perfect Bible and a perfect set of manuscripts, then that would be of God. If it's been changed and distorted, that would be the devil. You know, yes, or perfect. just human error, whatever. Okay. But it's Look. certainly not God's fault. Is my point? Well, well, yes, so and that—that that was my world, exact, Bruce. That was my exact point to you. Okay. To say okay. that God was the author of brain cancer, which is not what I, I don't think CJ said. I certainly didn't say that. My point was saying this: if you think it's objectionable for thick shades to say stuff like that. <clears throat> which you have said for a long time. No, there, there is a difference that God's word you would expect to be preserved. I yes, don't think but the, the point, whoa, 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 Bruce, whoa, whoa. Hold on, let me finish my point. The, well, all right. Would you Bruce. let me finish my point? Yes, finish your point, Bruce. Goodness. Thank you for cutting me off. Yes, sorry. Please finish your point, Bruce. Okay. Are you you being a prick, or you really want me to finish? No, he's being I, a prick. I just said to finish your yeah, He doesn't care what you're going to say, Bruce. All right, all right. He's, he's letting he's, Yeah, he's Dirty, nice. this okay. does not concern you. Please don't sure share it with us. I'm on the panel, the Bible, too, there, buddy. Yeah, I do think the Bible is very different than a fallen world around us. And I yes, I, I, I gather that. There is a difference. They're not the same. No, and that's not what I was saying. I was giving you a logical chain to follow, Bruce, and well, I don't then, know if then, you got the point. Okay, so what I say to thick shades about the Bible, how then does that apply to the earth the same? Yes, but that's not the point I was making. The point I was making, Bruce, is very simple. If you think that it is objectionable that he thinks Satan changed the Bible, right, mm -hmm. which it is, then understand that we are also saying to you that we think it's highly objectionable to say that God is the prime mover and direct cause of something like brain cancer. That was all that I was saying. Let me know if this scares you guys, okay? That the problem is that the way it comes across, it would seem to me, the best I can figure, and maybe I'm wrong, that I think there's a distortion or the lack of God Something is going on that creates what we see as evil. And I don't think it's right to say God put it into motion. God made it happen this way. He, foreknowledge, knew this would happen. I think it's, I get well, the idea, kind of, but I think it still comes down to rebellion. Yeah, devil, but that, that wasn't even the point I was making. The point the I was point making is, is very simple. I think everyone else got it on the panel. Maybe you didn't. I'm not the that point, smart, Ryan. The point, oh, I'm not insulting you either. Bruce, I, no, I'm just telling you, I'm not that quick. I'm not that smart. Well, all I all I said, Bruce, was that, again, if it's objectionable, and it is for someone like Thick Chase to say Satan and or God changed the Bible, especially Satan changing the Bible, then I think you can understand why we would say it's objectionable for God to create directly and be the author of brain cancer such that he's causing it in people to harm people. That's not what okay, we okay. think. Then, Do you then, see the then point? How, then how did brain cancer come about? Like I said, Bruce, you stormed off. I simply think that all illness, whatever it could be, is the logical corollary of the fall. Okay. And, did, and so what you're saying is God did not create any of these bad, horrible things? No, not necessarily, Bruce. I don't think. Again, well, God is not the author of moral. God is not the author of moral evil. So that's all I'm saying. Okay, so God didn't create cancer or um, no, viruses I'm, or disease. That, I'm or, saying that came about as a result of the Adamic fall. Well, why didn't you just answer that from the beginning instead of handing? Because off I gave because I gave you a logical corollary that I thought you would get. 
Apparently, you didn't get it. Oh, well. No, I thought you were mocking. No, no was. I was he giving was you a corollary. He's trying to condescend to you. He thinks so he's not having to do this with this air of superiority, and he wants to condescend and no, be sarcastic. No, dirty, you don't know about like it. Like the honey burn inside it, like the blood on my door. And, and the problem is that when you when you use the Bible, what was the Bible, that, the Bible is to be preserved. Reset. And, um, and I, I didn't. I didn't hear what you said, Bruce. What was my that? My point is that I don't think the Bible can be tainted by Satan. Is my point. Well, yes. Where the world, where the world, I think could be. Well, yes, but and I mean, would, he's would the God you of this know? world, but I don't think God would allow him to change. Him. Right. So the Bible's and, and there, got a magic spell on it, but little kids don't. Excuse, they can excuse, get cancer. Shush, dirty, shush. I'm responding well, to Bruce. The point, the point, but do you see, though, the point, Bruce? You don't think that the Bible has changed because it's the holy word of God, so therefore it cannot be uh, given to division or given to partiality. You would also, I tend to think, not think God himself is evil, right? No, no, I don't. That's right, I, so do, I but, do you, but do you now see the point I was making? If it's wrong to say that someone, that Satan, change the Bible or God change the Bible as because it's attributing evil well, to God because, the right before was that, because before that the position as I was hearing it was that God is responsible for evil yet yes not moral evil he's responsible for Ra was the discussion we had for calamity okay so when somebody changes the Bible, is that calamity or no? Again, that's the actions. That's the actions of wicked men. Kind of like you who doesn't think most of the Bible is even supposed to be there. Yeah, that doesn't make me wicked. It actually makes me, you know, righteous. <laughs> oh, dear. Lord, it's a miracle. Man up and vanished like a fart in the wind. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, it was. That was not an insult to you, Bruce. You got a bit too offended that I was not insulting you. I was driving the point to you that the corollary is the same. If you think God's word is holy because God is holy, and you don't want to impugn Him with evil, come on, don't piss do down me. Bruce's back and call it rain, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan, I, was, I, 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 I was kind of trying to follow what was being said before, and yet. It still comes back to God created it. And so it's kind of difficult. Yeah, we I, saying, yeah. all we're the, saying is that God did not create necessarily these things. Do I think God created the M1 uh, Abrams A2 SEP tank? No, I don't. Do I think God set in motion the, the fact that man has dominion on the earth and can create such technologies? Yes. Is he therefore responsible when uh, M1 Abrams blow to pieces people on a battlefield? No, because that's the actions of the people that made it. Do you see the point? Right, right. Yeah, there I go. think God allows people to make tanks and then kill each other, but he doesn't allow people to change the Bible or add lies in there. Yeah. Gonna... Dirty dude, I think your brain fell out. You might want to go looking for it. That's a good question. It's a good logical question. Do you think that God yeah. allows man to make tanks and blow each other up, but he doesn't allow people to change the Bible? Those well, that's a little non sequitur fallacy. That that is a giant yeah. steaming honking pile of non sequitur. Oh, can you give a well, real answer? Or are you I just don't actually gonna... disagree with that. I, but to just if I could just take the question anyway, even though I, for the record, I do think that Ryan has a point that it's a non sequitur. But let's just pretend it's not for a second. Um, I don't know any Protestant who doesn't think it's possible for the Bible to be corrupted. And the reason I said. Uh, uh, Protestant is because we flatly agree that 22 books that make up the Apocrypha are not divine scripture, right? Right. The question is, though, is it as um, can first off, can things be like ultimately lost in such a way that the Bible is no longer infallible? And I think the answer is no. Uh, secondly, is the Bible that we have as far as the 66 books corrupted? And I think that the answer is no, right? And this is kind of what the where the question boils down to, right? It's like, so basically, one of the two parties is right. Let's just take 
Paul as an example. If Paul is a prophet and apostle of God, then you're in sin. And if he's not, then I'm in sin. And it's really that simple. You know what I mean? And if he if he is, then I should be able to expect that the words written in that book are infallible, at least in their original autographs. And if he's not, then you should be able to expect that they are, in fact, not infallible, even in their uh, original autographs, right? So there's no... There's no issue there. I don't think anybody says that the that it's not possible for things to be corrupted. We've all seen a message Bible. We all know the New World Translation yeah. exists. The Apocrypha is a real thing, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm not okay. talking about like um, translation errors. I'm talking yeah, about we, is there is it possible for lies to be in there? Flat out lies. Well, again, why but, but, but there is no way that God that we could have that because there again, why would I bother making any truth claims above an exclusion any other religion like say Zoroastrianism? If I'm claiming that Jesus Christ is the one true God who is the second person of the divine of the Holy Trinity and all must be subject to him for their redemption, it doesn't make a lick of sense if then therefore there's some kind of lie or error in the Bible that would corrupt it or disqualify it as that ultimate standard of truth, which you obviously reject, Dirty. Yeah, well, um, it doesn't make sense to say that God would um, put some magic spell in the Bible to where nobody can lie in okay, it. But, no. And then at the same time, he uh, allows humans to have free will in everything dirty, else. They can make dirty, tanks and dirty, blow each other up. Dirty, he doesn't dirty, care about that. Dirty, only... No, I'm not finished you, talking, Ryan. I'm not finished making my making, point here. Uh, stop interrupting. Stop You're interrupting, now. Ryan. Yes, because you're I'm saying trying to make a point. things that are no, making I let you hurt. talk, and now you can let me talk. Yeah, sure. Okay, I will bear through your stupidity. Well, uh, you know, you mentioned that um, you would rather talk to somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, believed in their doctrine rather than somebody who, you know, was on the fence. And so I'm here to test that, and you're not um, passing the test. <laughs> You said that you'd rather talk to somebody who's firm in their belief, and I'm firm in my belief. Yes, and, and I, by that I meant I had a <laughs> okay. sexual meeting. Let, let me make his point because I want to make a point, and that is well. I'll, let me go first, then dirty. Let dirty speak uninterrupted, Ryan. Then you can respond. But let me say this: Yes, it's possible that the Bible, as we've received it, is corrupt. We have very good evidence that the manuscripts, because of the way the manuscripts came down, that we know what it says. But if you mean corrupt, like a false person put everybody's swallowed. Of course it's possible. But I know what it says. I know what it's, I think I know what it teaches. And uh, as this thing where God himself is writing through you, but that's not what inspiration is. As this there's, thing. Another example would be the variation in First Timothy 3 verse 16, Theos versus Huios, or God yeah. versus He. It really like, doesn't like mean anything. Well. I do like God manifesting the flesh, well, to be yes, honest. That means might, a lot to me. But I will, I will actually that. agree with Bruce, though, because overall, it's obviously talking about the King Eternal, 1 Timothy 1, verse 17, which is Jesus. So right. if it says he or God, it's really immaterial as to whether that, well, that doesn't affect the veracity of the scripture. As the well, point. I think it does, I think, in a sense that when it says God was manifest in the flesh, when you show it to someone, who puts faith in that Bible and it says God manifest in the flesh. It's it. I think it's even more powerful if all manuscripts were worded that way than even John one, one, in my opinion, it's just like, well, that's, yes, not, so that, you know. that's not the overall point we're dealing with here. The point dirty's making is that by the Bible has lies in it. No, and but the point is, yeah, right. Yeah. We, can, we can go to other manuscripts so to show the deity of Christ. So it's not like it's all relying on that. Which yeah, I think we're so agreement. If there's that. differences in the manuscript, uh, that's kind of like straining at the gnat and then gulping down the camel of Paul. The entire thirteen books of Paul are right. no, 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 and then no, you're no, straining no, at the no, gnat. No. You're saying, well, this manuscript has one error here, and you know, and we have a different translation for this. You guys are straining at the net. It's Those worth are looking at. Yeah, no, no, no. You're, you're yeah. just accusing the, the, the whole writer of the majority of the New Testament. I mean, to be honest, right. I mean, come on. Yeah, and, yeah. and frankly, you're straining at the net and gulping down the camel. You're gulping you, Paul you, you right are, down. You are being exceedingly dumb. And I'm, I don't um, know how else to say it because 
you can't translate Greek one to one, for example, into English. There are multiple okay, that's ways fine. to translate certain words, which does not invalidate the process. Yeah, I'm okay with uh, having a few translation errors. That's fine. But when yeah, we're I talking know. about dirty, I would, dirty, no, wait, 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 dirty, dirty. I would love to affirm you in something. Just, it's not going to happen here. Can you please let me? Can you? Can we go somewhere else? Like, okay. let's let me affirm you in something. Just, it's not going to happen on this. I want, I want you to be happy and everything. I just yeah, um, got to yeah, find well, really quickly. I'd like to just if make you don't a want me to talk point. about that, then that's <laughs> fine. I mean, no, you're I, fine. You're fine. I'm just messing with you. Go ahead, CJ. <laughs> then uh, take turns here, guys. Come on. Well, I just wanted to say real quick because. Um, original language then that brings up the question i was asking earlier now is it possible for the inspired words of god written in their original autographs or translated as intended would be another way you could put it is it possible for that to be corrupted and i would say the answer is no because otherwise the, the, if the uh, bible is inspired then yeah you're right about everything you said but if it's, you know, Paul is the only one who said it's inspired. Do Jesus you believe, said okay, let, Charles, let Charles go next here. He's, he was waiting. Do you believe that, that uh, Peter's words are inspired? Yes. Okay. Well, Peter, what does Peter say about Paul? Are you talking about 2 Peter 3.16? Yes. Or, let's start, yeah. That's a warning against Paul's letters in my view. <laughs> oh but what but the warning is unlearned and untrained people twisted to their own destruction that's so what they do with paul's letters yeah. if you're trained and you learn then you'll understand paul but i guess you're well, neither Char well charlie you have to realize that unfortunately <laughs> dirty chokes on english we've okay. been over this okay so yeah, we've been over this all right quite a so bit. what about the book of luke do you believe the book of luke yeah, I think Luke is a pretty good, um, historically, mostly historically accurate. Yeah, yeah. Let Charles okay. pursue this. Maybe there's a second. few so mistakes. Maybe Luke didn't get everything. What is your, what is your criteria to, uh, for determining what's inspired or not? If it sounds like Paul, um, nothing is inspired. Himself, he's the prophet. Zero he's the prophet. Words in the Bible are inspired the way you guys um, define inspiration. None How of do you know inspired. that? How do you know that? Well, because okay. Jesus what is said your that. criteria <laughs> what is your, what G, how can you quote Jesus whenever you're saying that the sources that you're quoting are not inspired that's not Jesus yeah, I love that. it Charles, doesn't have to be Charles. inspired to be true Hold on, no, no, no. Uh, how do you Charles know it's true exactly the right question. how do you know it's what is true? your criteria okay that's two what of you're talking what is your, criteria? what is your criteria yeah so like I said before, you know, it doesn't have to be inspired to be true. Like one plus one is two. That doesn't what? need to be okay. inspired. How do you know that's it? true? I can test it. I can test okay, to see how whether can it's you true. Test, how can you test that the words of Jesus in the Bible are true? Um, That's a good question. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you're arguing from an atheist perspective, which is weird. No, you're, no, you're asking I'm arguing. The atheist I'm arguing. How do I'm you how do you know, do you know no, that no, anything no, no. Jesus says is true? No, because you think it's inspired. Oh, and so so since I don't think it's inspired, it can't be true either. I'm asking you. Hey, your Jordy, that's an atheist argument. I'm asking we you your criteria. your criteria. Sir. Well, Jesus' criteria was first of all to take the word of two or three witnesses. So, How do you know that that statement is true? Because Jesus said it. How do you know Jesus said it? Um, because I've got two or three witnesses that say he said it. Who are your two or three witnesses? Mark, Luke, and Matthew. How do you know that they actually said it? Well, hang on though. That's, that's see, you're a, you're going down this order, atheist um, line of questioning. Because, How do you know, Layman Seminary? How well, do on, you on, know on, what Jesus on, said? You I don't know just what it is. Your criteria. I have the same well, hang on, guys, uh, like, Bible gotta, as you. There has to be a, a brief point of order here because that reasoning is inherently circular. Because you said, "How do we know?" Because it's verified by two or three witnesses. Well, how do you know? that the two or three witnesses thing is actually said by Jesus because that's verified by two or three witnesses. Well, that's and what you're trying you to establish. That, yeah. And how do you know that? I agree that there's a certain How do you know that the faith? Old Testament passage about two or three witnesses is true? Look, I, I agree that there's a certain amount of faith 
you know, when it comes to the Bible and I'm what do you reading mean by I, faith? the words that I read in the Bible. Yeah, but this is my question for you. Uh, that we have far better documentation for the New Testament than we have, uh, that we have far better. Choking. Ace are, Theo, are you smoking Paul are you Malls? Familiar, are you familiar with Ace Theo? Uh, yeah, he yeah. actually interprets Paul correctly. He knows uh, what Paul is well, trying to say. Again, well, you're appealing to somebody else. Wrong. What's your point? Yes, I'm just, you're, I'm just you're, now, you're now shifting the topic. And ironically, and t- telling I'm us that we're rejecting evidence, are, are you you're call, actually making an appeal to authority with man. Oh, the irony. No, no, you are reading into a Hebraism in Greek what you think is there which is not there and now you are directing us to a man no Dude, i'm just as as no, as, as no, idea no you are no in seminary no made the claim man. that i'm not hey, understanding paul correctly I'm and here. i said i'm talking here hold on you can go next i am getting seriously fun, annoyed with this guy why are you appealing to Ace Thulu? Oh, I'm not appealing <laughs> to him. I'm not making some sort of argument or anything. You said I was just trying to clear up my position so that Layman Seminary would know because he said, oh, you're misinterpreting Paul or whatever. And so you I wanted are. him to know. You're like, rejecting uh, Paul. It's Right. It's because- I, I'm rejecting Paul, but I have the same view. Why are of you Paul's rejecting do- Paul? I have the same interpretation of Paul's doctrine as Ace Theo. If you, and that's why I was just pointing him out so that it would be an easy reference, so that you'd kind of know what. Okay. My right, and, I that. and I'm destroying your chain of argumentation, which you're not getting. I was talking to Lane. So, what are seminary, your objections Ryan. to Paul? What What is so wrong with Paul's theology? Uh, th- well, there's a lot wrong with it, in my opinion. We'll go um, with the main ones. Uh, the main one would be that, you know, his gospel is the opposite of Jesus's gospel. That's an assertion. All right, keep going. Uh, what do you, uh, I mean, Jesus's gospel is to do works. Good works are going to save you. And then Paul's gospel is That's great. an assertion um, based on what passage? Um, every passage. Like when Jesus Is it said, possible you're misunderstanding what Jesus no, is saying? No, it's absolutely not now, I'm a works-based heretic, and I don't, I would say that Jesus. It's almost okay, so, impossible to misunderstand So are you Jesus. saying, are you saying your reason for rejecting Paul is because you think that Paul is opposed to Jesus? Yes. Okay, well then let's just focus on studying in Jesus' words. Okay. So, so Jesus said, okay, I'll right, quote Jesus. Jesus said that um, the reason are you say are are you do you understand my argument right now? Yeah, you're saying you don't understand God. Well, I said it, I'm it, not it, no it, no no no. I'm talking him. about salvation. I'm saying if God would not have made the first move, I don't believe that I would have been smart enough to be able to consume all the material, all the evidence that's supposedly out there and, and come to the conclusion. So I, mean, I, I, agree. Will... I think we both agree that okay, the only so way have... to get to God is through Jesus. He's the only way we can learn how to please God okay, is through yeah, Jesus. But but yeah, but you're going you're going a totally different direction in that. But m- let me let me clarify my point. I'm saying that is what's known as a white swan. What you're gonna do earlier. Yes. No. If you, if you don't read not. books, if you don't read books, you haven't written a book. I mean, I read the Bible. Skimming you. I want That's you guys fine. to try to convince me that I'm wrong because I want to practice debating. I you. think I already have. I believe I already have. Well, if we go by the correct, well, if know, we go by the limitations, respect, ahead, I don't yeah. really think that you are interested in being proven wrong or anything like that. Exactly. Because I mean, not five minutes ago you said I don't read, and then 30 seconds after that you said I've studied this like a lawyer for 20 years, which is like yeah, those are I, I, I haven't read a lot of scholars, admitted, and but I do read the Bible. If you studied like Bible. a lawyer, you would have noticed the lawyer trap I set up for you. Exactly. Uh, yeah, but you're which, saying, way, like, do you blew, study like a lawyer? 30, of course I study sank, like a lawyer. You, you sank know? your own ship because you just admitted you only study liberal sources. No, dude. I study the Bible. You well, know, hang on. So you even study the Bible Bible according to Yale study. University. Yes, you. Said I think that, that you guys you, just um, when you read don't Tom, you're a fisherman. Quick, get out of the this evidence. Hey, you, and you want to hear, and here's how man. I think it's going down. You guys <laughs> yeah, want to hear my you, view, <laughs> but you don't want to hear the evidence of my view. You well, want to hear my view. It's like you want to look at the title of the video and then say, "Oh, that's a bad movie," even though you didn't watch the movie. You just saw the title and you disagreed with the title. That's not true for a moment, okay? Because can we all talk one at a time, please? 
Yeah, so let me, I'm just going to, I'm going to demonstrate very quickly that that's the, what you just accused, at least for me. And I would, I would venture to say for Ryan and Charles as well, because I've talked to Ryan a bunch of times and me and Charles don't agree on practically anything, but I've debated him. So I know he's very intelligent and learned. Um, so, you know, there's that. But anyways, so you said that we're not really interested in what you've got to say. We're simply interested in refuting you. Okay. Do you know who Joel Baden is? No. Okay. He is on your side. He's a documentary hypothesis proponent, Harvard University professor. He no, is no, you're creating to be... a straw man. You're going to say this guy's some atheist. Oh, He's no, on no my side. Not, I'm not. You don't even don't know what I'm saying. Okay? Let him finish. Let him finish. I have no idea what sorry, I'm saying, sorry. and I know you don't know because first off, you didn't hear me say it, and second off, you just articulated it one thousand percent wrong. Okay. He studies Joe Biden, not Joe Baden. A thousand percent no, is a lot. J O E L. Joel Baden. Okay. Okay. Joel Baden is a Harvard professor of biblical I know studies. Who he, is. He, he is an atheist, but nevertheless, he He's is a Jew. The, uh, the, the biggest modern proponent of the traditional documentary hypothesis, right? So there's different variations of it, obviously. But as far as how it was originally articulated, he is considered the poster child for the modern documentary hypothesis. I have not only read his books and listened to virtually everything that he has had to say as far as on, uh, on the computers here are concerned, YouTube and stuff like that. But I also happen to be, I wouldn't say friends, but friendly with the people who he knows here online, for example, Skylar Fiction and Dr. Josh Bowen. Now, what's the point there? The point is, you're saying you guys aren't even interested in hearing my view. I'm literally interacting with the scholars representing your view, and you're not even represent. You're not even interacting with them, so you're not even interested. What's, in your what's his name? Okay, okay, in his can view. I ask you? What's his name? What was his name, CJ? Joel Baden. Joel Baden. I, I just found him. So can I ask yeah, you a, a question, Calvin? Guy, right? He's, he's got glasses. A Yale beard. University. I see. Can I ask uh, yeah, Calvin I thought he was a question? Harvard. Can I respond to that, Calvin? Because you said that um, you know, you've done a lot of study on the documentary hypothesis. So I'd like to ask you, do you deny the fact that there are multiple sources for the Torah and that it wasn't written by one person and that it was written uh, over a number of hundreds of years by multiple different authors and redactors, editors, compilers? Etc. Yeah, it's not a that? fact, and I do deny it. I'll just, just okay. Cut well, then the point. you not a haven't fact, studied I anybody. I, but, you said you well, studied. I, the point. You're still missing you the point. You're saying because that's that other people said. aren't interested. You're, you're saying that other people aren't interested in studying your view. But I just demonstrated to you, at least with this one individual, I've done more study on your view than you've done. No, um, just because Joel Baden, I don't have any idea who that guy is, but I still know about the documentary hypothesis. So. All you right. Know, well, here, let, let's knowing let's about him. Get your idea. Do you know who Julius Wellhausen is? Um, no. no, I've heard that name before, but I don't know. No, I've never. All read right, anything. he came up with the documentary hypothesis. So, like what is your point? My Just point because is, you're saying that you know we are Isaac really Newton came up with view. gravity. Like that doesn't mean I need to read Isaac Newton. I don't need to know no, anything it, about Isaac. Julius Newton. Wellhausen oh, literally is the guy who came up with the documentary hypothesis. It's his idea. Okay. No, and no, it's not point. actually. Well, um, he, he, Peter, built it, really he built it. He built it from no, others. No, you're actually being incorrect here. Um, Jeremiah eight eight came up with the documentary hypothesis no, seven hundred oh years before God. Jesus no, was didn't. born. That's literally so incorrect. You're that's okay. lying. No, uh, actually, I'm not. But well, how Jeremiah? I, I never expect honesty from the you. The book of here Jeremiah the came up the with the documentary hypothesis thousands of years ago. So you're lying. Farm it. Okay, you are you know for a fact that's not true. Yes, okay. no, it is true. No, you're literally let's, fully let's aware. Call, you're cognizant let's take of it. Up the you verse. Need to repent right let's now because you're lying. Up the verse. But nevertheless, but nevertheless, I'm going to forgive you of your lies. Appeal to authority here. Jeremiah eight eight. All right. Now take the spanking that you were predestined before the foundation of the world to take. All right. <laughs> oh, you okay, are telling okay. me yeah, you do not read the scholars who agree with you. Are you are you understanding the point? You do not read the scholars that agree <laughs> with you. I don't I can really name a third read many books. Like. We know you don't read. Would That's you the like point. another? 
I watch Yale videos. I watch Yale courses, guys. Yale. Dude, you don't get you it. You can I yell, can, yell can, all day, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you're going to understand scripture. I can take scripture. courses right now from Harvard University. They're available online for free. It doesn't uh -huh. mean I attended freaking Harvard, and it doesn't make me a freaking lawyer. Stop being uh, such It makes me feel it. good, though. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm a Yale. Well, I'm a if you feel Yale. good, then why don't you learn to write a paper and put can it I ask you a question, and put Lehman? it into Arabian style? What? Um, do, would you admit that there are multiple sources for the Pentateuch and that it wasn't written by one person and it, that it was written by multiple people over a period of hundreds of years um, okay. with editors, uh, redactors. Well, that's a complex. That? that was that's a question a, for Lehman. I don't see what the point in answering it is, though. He already told he, us that he Yeah, we know that Calvin denies it. That. We know Calvin yeah. thinks hot is well, cold and cold is hey, hot, but I'm asking know, Lehman Seminary. I, I think we found Tom Rabbit's brain in a bat. That's no a question kidding, for right? Lehman Seminary. So did, well, I would start like this. Did Moses write about his death? Or did Joshua exactly. write? That's a really good Okay, question. all right. But see, the thing you got to understand about the process of inscripturization, in other words, while there's prophets on earth, God is able to to uh, give revelation and inspiration. And that includes, I know. See, you're jumping that includes to these the process. conclusions. I didn't ask whether it was inspired. I okay, asked whether right. there's multiple authors. All right, all right hold on. And, you, and you're, that you're, is, yes, you're inferring, no oh, well, denies. if it was written by multiple authors, then it must not be inspired. And no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not the question. Okay, all right. Well, let you me, don't think anything this. is inspired, so it's a logical conclusion. I know. It's a separate question. It's a separate so question. Be, then why not be more succinct in your question? questioning the question was specific no it was not <laughs> i don't understand what the point of having this conversation is anymore you literally know, you don't like the documentary don't hypothesis you don't like the fact well, that the moses like didn't write you. deuteronomy you want me to That's be frank i do not like you wait, i think wait, you wait, are wait. a dishonest wait. troll uh, See, I don't now we're getting the truth he didn't name like me personally the, it's not my doctrine he hates it's hey, me wait, personally wait, wait, wait. name wait. me the yale scholar you studied what back is up your name? views in christine debate. hayes Christine, Christine Hayes. All right, Hayes. got a name. Let's look up this Christine Hayes. Doctor Christine Hayes. Let's look it up on. Uh, That's the is, one that teaches for Yale, right? Yes, Yale. And she's like, well, yeah, I've listened to her before. Scholar, yeah, she's. Brilliant. I don't agree with her. One scholar. Right, I don't agree with her on everything not, not either. The hilarity of it. He's he's studied like a lawyer, and he's basing his argument off of one person. Wow. No, I'm not. I'm basing it off of my overall conclusion. I've been studying the Bible for 20 years. And okay, so, well, I've read it from the so back. I've been understanding them times in a row. Dude. Look, 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 look. Claimed that Joseph you Smith claimed that. Ellen White claimed that. Yeah, okay, so respect. answer me this, You're Ryan. How do you determine news. whether Joseph Smith is a true prophet or not? Because he did, he contradicted himself. Ergo, he's not a true prophet, just like you. And what about Paul contradicted himself? Well, you're assuming Paul contradicted himself. You've never demonstrated that text. he did. It's in the dirty, text. Dirty, dirty, I've got a question for you before I go. Do, do you think Christine is sort of hot? <laughs> I... I'm attracted to her because I don't know. I mean, she's not that beautiful, <laughs> but her knowledge is seems yeah, like attractive yeah, well, somehow. It's like I know. Well, good night, you guys. See a star <laughs> and you're like, yeah, something about her. She's even though she's not. That she's an eight. Beautiful. She's a seven. Right. I don't know. Her the knowledge actually <laughs> increases that number. I'm sorry. I'm not. That's I, that wasn't cool. She's fine. She's a fine woman, I suppose. She's going to hell, but she's. she's How her do her you know she's that. going to hell? <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I know I'm going to hell. I'm no, predestined for it. Arabach. See, Arabach knows what's up. He'll tell you about the documentary hypothesis. Uh, no, I won't because uh, I'm not going to be defending you in this matter. <laughs> he knows about it, though. I just want to say that if I ever said praise is stupid, I recant that. Praise is brilliant compared to this guy. I'll be right back. And if you get him and A of VA in the same room, oh, A's, I, A's philosophy. There. Oh, no, Charlie, oh I've been there. They, they come hunting for me. They come hunting for me. 
Well, people want me to debate them, and they, it's like Charlie, we don't see eye to eye. Uh, friend, let me save you the time. Don't. Well, I don't even think they would be disciplined enough to prepare. That's too much study. I know, well, they, they, well, the, the, the intellectual capacity just ain't there, friend. I'm not a debater, but I debated praise in a debate. Oh, did that's you? the irony. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Praise is not known for doing very intelligent things, and by way of comparison, he looks like a genius here. Well, yeah, praise dives deep and he studies deep, but he it's it's just that he he waffles. I don't know how to say it. Well, that and then he makes ridiculous conclusions like there's sin up in heaven. Yes, he's actually double. Do you know why? Do you know why he's saying that? No, because I just, asked. I'll tell you why. Because about a day before, I was talking about conditional security, and I said, "So, do you believe that once you get to heaven, you can lose your salvation?" And he said, "No." And said, "Well, well, why are you making arguments that free will and other things like that can reverse your salvation now?" You know. Mm. And then, so next thing you know, he comes back with this, "Oh, well, there's sin in heaven. God allows sin in heaven." And therefore, you know, you could be in heaven well, with sin. Satan sinned in heaven, and look where that got him. So it's possible to sin in heaven, but I don't think that well, no, what anyone praise, who sins will remain in all there. Respect, no, that's not what praise is saying. Praise is saying there is actively sin up in heaven now. And my point to him was you can't do that because Jesus is the Messiah, which you believe. So if you're going to assert that he is the Messiah, you cannot say that there is sin up in heaven. The Messiah was cut off for the sins of his and, people. And who is in heaven right now anyway? Well, you think the Lord, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are up there. Right, but who you else? Think, well, what's your point, Charlie? My point is, is that are the, how is he saying that there's sin in heaven right now? That's at least the conversations I've had with him when he was still actively teaching this. I don't know what he's saying now to the exact letter, but that was the discussions that I've had with him before. Where for a long time he was saying it was literal sin in literal heaven. Uh, my biggest problem with anyone saying that humans are actually in heaven right now is that just said today you will be with me in paradise, and anyone who knows basic Hebrew would realize. Paradise and Eden are the same word. So they're most likely in the Garden of Eden, not in... It, I have a feeling I've talked to you before, Arabot. Are you a Christian or are you not a Christian? I'm not a Christian. I'm a polytheist. That's what I thought. I thought you sounded familiar. Yeah. Hey, so real briefly, um, I'm going to make sure to actually watch this series. But... It didn't take me much digging at all to find this quote from Christine Hayes. She says, quote, So most biblical scholars today do accept some version of Wellhausen's theory. Yes, we feel the Bible is composed of different sources. We don't always have tremendous confidence, though, in some of the finer details and conclusions of his work and the work of other scholars who followed after him. Some doubt the existence of the Elohist source altogether. It is so fragmentary and so isolated. Others defend the antiquity of the priestly source. We'll be coming back to that. Obviously, this is this sounds like it's from her lecture. Others yeah, this is all accurate. Post everything after the 5th century. It was written in the 4th, 3rd, and the Persian period. None of it comes from an older period. Scandinavian scholars, they're not enthusiastic about source criticism at all. The whole Copenhagen School of Biblical Scholarship prefers, many of them prefer, to see the Bible as basically an oral narrative that just grew through accretion over time. So I did assign readings in the documentary hypothesis. It's extraordinarily important, but you need to understand that it's only one hypothesis, a major and controlling hypothesis out there, but it's not without criticism, end quote. So first off, Christine Hayes' expertise from what I've been able to gather here off of this page is actually in the Talmud. It's not in biblical scholarship itself. Second off, this is the <laughs> lecture that she has online, okay. and she's making quite plain she does not think it's a foregone conclusion, but that some version of it is at least accepted amongst the majority of American scholars. Yeah, and that's right. kind of the way I see it too, and CJ, that is that there are a few point. different sources, like the J.
and the P and D, those are obvious separate sources. They are not the same person, and they um, came to existence over a period of hundreds of years. How, how do you just because you have name changes? That's all. That's your only basis for that. No name changes. No, it, it's well. It no, okay, to do well, with documentary hypothesis. There is. I want to hold on. Wait, wait, more wait, wait, CJ. CJ, CJ I want to see how much he actually knows. It's about ideology. It. It's uh, divided up by ideology. Like so, for example, the Book of Deuteronomy sees um, animal sacrifice as more of a celebration, and it's more of like a humanitarian and why? type of thing. And why? And because why? it's a polemic against the book of Leviticus, where it's a when were they within. written? When were they written? Deuteronomy was written after Leviticus. And the JEPD a hypothesis, what is the most recent version of the of the Deuteronomy? Tanakh? How do you know that? It's the latest book. I of... didn't say the book of the Bible. I said uh, what source? Let me let me make sure I clarify this. What source is the most recent form? Uh, within the the documentary hypothesis, yeah, it's like so Deuteronomic against uh certain like the P and Robbie. Uh, it does it's not word for word, so it's not like they stole it. Gives us in which the Talmud is written significantly after even things were perfect. Uh, when things were ideal, would be probably biblical truth that God indeed instituted animal sacrifice as clearly. It's like the end of Mark, the very last. Yeah. And what you are doing is trying to say higher criticism is the same thing as lower criticism. I don't think Next you even criticism know what you're talking is about. low criticism, dum dum. Not you're the just same repeating thing. something that Layman's was saying, uh, as if you know no, what he was talking I'm about. Not, I don't think I'm, you know what he was even talking about, dude. I highly suggest you pull the stupid switch off of you. It would help you. This I know you. You have a lot of ad hominems, but you just don't have anything against what my doctrine. Define, okay, define. How am I hominem. wrong? Tell define me how I'm wrong. Define ad hominem. Yeah, it's like a personal attack. You don't like the yeah, color so of my hair. You don't like the size attack. of my feet. You know, whatever. Oh, it's all personal. Right. You don't like I bet me you wear worse. size 11s. A size 11s, huh? Right, I don't right. Care. He doesn't right like something about me like personally. It's not my doctrine. I don't care. Well, you, dude, every time you say, <laughs> you insult people the same way. So when I feed your poor conduct back to you, you uh, have I ever it. said anything personal about anybody? Yes, you have, and I don't give a rat's behind. But my point is, if I do. I, I would like I to don't apologize. Get how you for that. can be this dumb? How can you be this? Yeah, obvious? do I say you're dumb, Ryan? Do I say you're? Hey, stupid? okay, let's let's do something new here. I got an idea. I want I want you guys to. I, I want to get an intelligent response because I I'm pretty sure this argument is has uh, holes in it. But we're getting one to respond, so I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. I'm going to take advantage of you guys all being here um, really quick because uh, it's not getting anywhere and I, and I want to take advantage of this. Yeah, so. Honestly, okay. Dude, so I'm here's my, here's my, here's my, my, please, please give me, please give me uh, your, your, your full uh, brain power on this. Yeah. Everybody here. Cause I, you guys are smart and I want to, um, so here's the argument. Premise one. So this isn't, this is my argument against dualism. And of course, it only applies to the believer. Okay, so I just want to try to find the holes in this. I don't think it's bulletproof or anything, but and I'm going to put it on the screen. So, but I'll tell. Yeah, you share first. your screen so we can see it. So, premise one. Okay, so this is my argument against dualism. Premise one. Uh, from and so this is something I would pre presume a, a dualist are going to affirm. Premise one: I am not my body. Premise two, only bodies die. Three, then the conclusion would be, um, you shall not surely die is true. Comparison there, to be honest, because both. I'd say we are made up of both substances, and you need both substances to make a function. Send me an invite or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, you know, when they say, like, we don't die, we only change location, I don't really think that that's accurate. And, you know, Frank Turek's really the one who made that popular. I'm sure he didn't come up with it, but he popularized it. And if my interpretation of dual... People talk about brain in a vat. Now imagine the vat's gone. And These signs will accompany those... ...thing, I'll just say briefly, I did appreciate...
So what he did is he told the disciples, for this period of time, tell no one that I am the Christ. After I rise from the dead, you'll preach that I am the Christ, but don't do it right now. Because right now, don't tell Israel that I am the Christ, so that when the cross occurs, the crucifixion will be unknowing. They will do it through ignorance because they won't understand that I'm the Son of God. Then I'll die for their sins, I'll rise from the dead, and then you will preach forgiveness on the cross. Sparrow, Olive, Yuri, and um, uh, who's that? Vulcan. L Logan, that's it. Yeah, sorry, my eyes are terrible. Hello, Logan, and everyone. Hello. Blessings and prayers to you, sweetie, for all you're going through. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate that. <laughs> we're, we're, con we're confessing today. Today is a confession night. <laughs> all, all, right. stuff. all the dumb stuff we did. Oh, yeah. We've all done a lot of dumb stuff, haven't we, over our years? Yes, we yeah. have. But it's amazing how God carries us through. I mean, now, I being, actually, now, now being the, saved and looking back. One of the worst things I did, I, I lit up a, um, a plywood factory on fire. Oh, my gosh. You I did what? Whole, I, I burned down a whole plywood factory. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. Did you get busted? <laughs> no. They never called me. It was so stupid. I was a kid. I can't believe I did it. Gosh, because so, it's like <laughs> mountains burned of cocaine. Down a, burned down a whole factory. I was, I was, okay, you did it in Ukraine. I was afraid of the fire department for, for months. Every time I heard the fire sirens, the, the sirens go by, I would hide. <laughs> Patrick goes, you're all under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's so funny because like I've never heard of playing soccer on a motorcycle, like or even a mountain yeah. of cocaine. Like that's something that you see in a movie. Okay. Uh, and I, I literally should write a book about it. You really yeah. should. You definitely yeah, Back in the day, I mean, you used to go from the boat. <laughs> you didn't get arrested. Right? Life, life of an immigrant. Yeah, that's how you got. Yeah. So we're confessing today, are we? It sounds like it. There is, uh, <laughs> of our teenage years, yeah. At home, without a tax disc, and I never had a. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my god! I, right, I just left. <laughs> friend and her goose started flying down the house. No, but I, I mean, like, in a police chase, like, what do you fear? Yeah, it's a little. I know my cars. That's a Peugeot. Or... <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was saying, what? It's so funny. Uh, uh, uh... Driving around this mountain of and and it was a uh, yes, but never. Yes, and having a always on time, and that made me happy.